Hey everyone, I just finished my first roast with my drum roaster's new motor and I thought I'd share the results. So I did 14 ounces of Colombians. The roast came out very nice and consistent as you would expect for a drum roast of coffee. Looks good, already smells really good. So here's how, how this thing works. So at its core, I guess, is this customized uh, insulated vessel I made. It's essentially just a ring of wood with two large discs um, or cylinders of aluminum, I suppose, mounted onto that ring. And then in between the aluminum is a fiberglass insulation. On the bottom, along with all the chaff I haven't vacuumed out yet from that roast, is just a piece of tin foil stapled on to keep it from blowing around and from being vacuumed out. Um, yes, the wood does heat up. Right now I can smell a little bit of pine resin, uh, but I have not tasted that on the beans. Um, if this thing ever moves out of prototype stage, I will certainly not use a piece of wood for the base. That just doesn't seem right. Uh, let's see, so then the, the drum, which we'll get to in a minute, rotates in two of these brass, brass bushings. I got these at my local big box store. Um, I really don't know what these are used for but I will have a link to these guys down in the comments and in my write-up. So these go through the walls, which allow the drum and skewer to be inserted through them. This is a super cheap drum I got off of eBay. Again, I'll have a link to that elsewhere. And here's the driver part. So what this is, is a four watt synchronous gear motor. Let's zoom in a little bit on that guy. So this guy runs at 35 revolutions per minute and it's driven off of standard 110 volt AC voltage. Um, I have a piece of quarter inch uh, stainless steel rod mounted to the motor and the coupling is done with another thing off of eBay. This is a seven, seven millimeter to one quarter inch flexible coupler. It's, fle it's flexible to allow for um, the motor being a little bit offset from the rotation of the gear shaft, up or down, any which way, uh, which is certainly the case when trying to drive homemade junk equipment like this. So this, what this little coupler lets me do is just not have things perfectly aligned. Now to mount the square shaft into the round coupler, I, I put the square shaft on my lathe and turn down the end um, using a file to get it down to a quarter inch circle away from a quarter inch square. So let's put this thing together. So let's move this into view. So first the drum goes into the base and then I'm kind of calling this the skewer because it feels like a skewer and oh you're not going to be able to see this very well but basically I'm threading the square rod through Oh, through the square holes on the ends of the drum. Um, these holes that came with the drum are one quarter inch square. So I just thread it through. Da -da. Plus with it a little bit. I definitely do this part before the roast, um, before the whole unit has been preheated. There we go. So it's in there. I'll set up and I'll plug this bad guy bad guy in to show you what it looks like. Bad boy. There we go. So I'm so far I'm pretty happy with this little four watt motor. It's super quiet. Lets me hear the cracks really easily. Does not have a lot of torque. You can stop it with just a touch. Um, I had uh, when I put 16 ounces of beans into this drum earlier, it did have some problems driving it. I just did 14 ounces of beans in that last roast and had zero problems driving it. So we'll see where this goes. It's a pretty simple device. And then, of course, my turbo oven fits on top for the roast. It works just like a Sir Crazy turbo oven roaster in that regard. So I'm probably going to roll with this guy for a couple months uh, unless something breaks catastrophically. 
uh, just to see where I want to go long term with this kind of drum roaster. I very much like these cheap drums off of eBay. These were like $7 shipped to my house. Awesome value. And nicely enough, the, uh, the square rod is something that I can get from my local Home Depot. So really the only difficult part is making an insulated base for it and some way to drive it. And I did make an insulated base um, because my, my buddy Dom tried out a very, very similar roaster using just a stock pot for the base. And he had some long roast times. Uh, he's using, also using turbo oven to drive it. And I, I sort of assumed that he was getting a lot of heat loss through the sides. And with this insulation, this thing behaves exactly like my old Sir Crazy Turbo Oven Roaster, roaster did. Um, I get to second crack in the usual like 12 to 13 to 14 minutes. No problems whatsoever. So I'll talk to you guys later, hopefully with some more and new interesting drum roast information. Thanks for watching. Well, here we go with the first roast on one of these little 4 watt synchronous gear motors. So this is 14 ounces of greens in my smaller drum. So as you can see, it's very quiet. The biggest noise here is just the sound of the beans themselves bouncing, or bouncing around inside the drum. It's very nice. And otherwise, in the background, you're going to hear my exhaust fan. Um, so I'm really happy so far. We'll see if this little guy can hold up and it won't catch on fire.